Hi, welcome back to Half of Heidi. Um, so this is part two of my 50 things I wish I knew um, before I'd had gastric sleeve surgery. Um, I've already done my first 25. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, I will link it um, in the description box below if you want to go check out my first 25 things. Um, now we're on to the next 25. Okay, so number 26. Um, I wish I'd known the impact of weight loss on my regular medication doses. I think I, in theory, I was expecting my medication doses to need to change because I weighed less. I just didn't realize how much it would change. Um, and again, your mom, your mileage may vary. I always tr have trouble saying that. Um, but yeah, yours, yours may vary, but my, for me, um, I was on medication for depression and a mood disorder and I went from three medications down to one and then the one I was on, um, pretty much halved. So huge impact from a dosage perspective. In fact, I felt really, I felt worse when I was on a higher dose. It was like it had gone beyond being therapeutic and was actually more harmful than, than good. Number 27, this one's a bit exciting. This is sex and how sex changes um, once you've lost weight. Because I was very big to start with. I was um, 191.7 kilograms or 422.6 pounds. So sex for me back then was, was a challenge. It was like Tetris. It was like very difficult to make it work. Um, and there was, you know, a fair amount of fat covering up very important body part bits that you need for sex. Um, so yes, sex changes a lot, a lot. I will leave it at that. Um, 28, um, this one for some reason, even though it is a no brainer, um, I wish I had really known this pre-op, but there is so much truth to the low carb, low sugar, um, requirement of this diet that you really, um, will, um, lose weight more consistently and you will have less hunger and you will be, and your energy levels will be sustained if you stick to a low carb, low sugar diet. So higher protein, um, even for some people, that includes higher fat, but it, um, it doesn't mean go crazy on fat. It just means don't focus so much on fat content, focus on total calories, um, and low carb, high protein. Um, so yeah, I it took me a little while to actually really have all of that sink in, but yeah, if you can, um, if you can cut out bread and pasta and rice and um, potatoes and things like that, um, you will see, improved and sustained weight loss. Um, and yeah, I just really wish I'd got that beforehand because I would have planned my post-op diet a bit better if I'd, if I'd really got that. I blame the fact that I had a really bad, um, dietitian giving me advice at first. Um, and with this, um, what's really helpful is looking up low carb recipes, but also diabetic friendly recipes because they tend to be um, low carb, low sugar. Anyway, number 29, um, cost versus quality when it comes to vitamins. Um, pretty much everybody is recommended by their dietitian or surgeon or medical team, a specific vitamin to take, um, pre-op, post-op, whatever. Um, it is really important that you take a good quality vitamin. Um, and for, I don't know, for the, well, the reality is you tend to get what you pay for. If you go for something that is gimmicky and, um, like those hair bears or whatever the hell they're called, um, you, you're going to get what you pay for. Um, yeah, no disrespect to the Kardashians, but just because a vitamin is promoted by the Kardashians does not mean it is a good vitamin. So... I would definitely, if I were you, stick to vitamins that are sold as being for weight loss surgery patients. Um, and if in doubt, check the ingredients. Learn about, you know, what is the daily recommended dosage of certain things and see how much your vitamins have in it. Um, that's just unfortunately the reality of the vitamin industry. 
Uh, number 30, um, bad food is easier to eat. Um, so food with sugar um, and fat and all that kind of stuff. I'm not even fat. I'm so not as against fat as I used to be. But anyway, um, sugar that's bad, sugar that's bad for you. Food that is bad for you, chips and lollies and chocolate and stuff, does tend to be easier to eat than, you know, a piece of chicken or steak or something like that. And again, a lot of it comes down to the density of the food, which I talk about in part one video. Um, so my little tip to anybody who cares is if you're really craving something that you know you probably shouldn't be eating, um, have some good food first. Um, so not only are you reducing the amount of the bad food that you can get in, but sometimes it does actually satisfy the, the food craving um, and you don't then reach for whatever the bad food was um, in the first place. But yeah, I'm not suggesting never ever have any bad food ever again. Um, but yeah, sometimes it does help to have some good food first um, and then you can eat less of the bad food. Um, number 31. Sugar-free lollies are evil. Oh my God. The little warning on the back of the label that says, you know, high consumption may have a laxative effect is not to be trifled with. I had the most amazing poo explosion emergency situation, um, evacuate the building kind of deal um, after eating an entire bag, again, because bad food is easier to eat. But anyway, an entire bag of sugar-free lollies Holy crap, no pun intended, but yeah, that laxative effect is real. In fact, it had a better laxative effect than my laxatives had. So if you're trying to get things to move through you, um, sugar-free lollies will definitely help, but watch out for those little buggers, they're evil. Um, number 32 is pooping and the frequency in which you poop. Um, so pre-op, I was a multiple times a day kind of girl. Um, now I'm a couple of times a week kind of girl and sometimes only once a week. And a lot of that comes down to how little I'm eating, but also how high quality the food is that I'm eating. My body's actually using a lot of the food, most of the food, um, and converting it into energy. So I'm not actually having as much wastage, waste, poo waste. Um, so I'm fine with that. However, you do have to be careful because you can get backed up. You can um, get dehydrated and then end up getting constipated. So you still do have to keep an eye on your pooping frequency. Um, but I wish I'd known because for a while there, I was really worried that I was not going enough. And now I kind of accepted what my new normal is. Um, but I do still take laxatives every now and then when I think it's been a week and I haven't gone and I just want to do a clear out sale, as I call it, um, just to make sure everything's still moving through. You don't have to take laxatives. You can take extra fiber. It's just what I do. Uh, number 33, um, how often should you do weigh-ins? Um, the human body fluctuates all day, every day in terms of how much it weighs. If you weigh yourself um, every morning, and you can, um, it's just not a true representation of sustained weight loss. So I highly recommend you only um, write down how much you weigh on every Monday or Tuesday, or whatever it is, but one day a week that you pick that that's your weigh in day and that's the day you're going to record your weight loss for the week. Go nuts and weigh yourself as much as you want to, unless you have a, you know, a psychological um, problem where it really hurts you emotionally to see the scales going up and down. Um, but just record it one day consistently a week. That's my recommendation anyway. Uh, number 34, counting steps. Um, it's actually a really great way to track your um, mobility and how much exercise you're getting in a day, obviously, um, counting your steps. You don't need to buy a, a really expensive Fitbit or fan-dangled device to count your steps. They are really cool though, because you can join communities and have step competitions and all that kind of stuff. Um, so do what works for you. Um, what I really love with my Fitbit was not just counting steps, but also seeing my pace. 
um, and my stride length change. So the more weight I lost, the more exercise I was doing, the fitter I got, um, the better my pace and the better my stride length was. And I actually liked to see that a little bit more than I really cared about the daily total steps. Um, it was more my fitness level that I was more um, excited to watch. Uh, number 35, I do highly recommend creating a dream board, vision board, goal board, whatever you want to call it. Mine was a virtual one. I just did a digital um, photo board. Um, but put all of put photos or whatever it is um, on your on your board that are things that you are wanting to achieve in life that you will only be able to achieve through weight loss surgery. And any time you are thinking about chucking it all in, having that piece of cake, um, having that pizza, whatever it is, whatever your f f vice food is, um, get out your vision board and think to yourself, what is more important to me? Is it achieving these things that mean the world to me or that piece of cake or piece of pizza? Um, nine times out of 10, this has worked for me in saying no to the thing that I really wanted right then in that moment in, in favor for the thing I wanted the most in my life. Um, I've been very successful with that approach in terms of being able to continue um, having my weight loss. Um, I've lost 92 kilograms now, which is um, over 200 pounds, just over 200 pounds. Um, so, and I'm still going. So it works. I promise it does. Um, and yeah, just don't have naughty food in the house. Make it an absolute mission to have to go get naughty food when you want it. Um, okay. What is my next one? Number 36, learning how to accept compliments. This is a hard one. If you've, if you've, if you've always been the person who has been given a compliment because somebody likes your bag or your shoes, but they never say, oh, wow, you look amazing. Um, it can be really weird when yeah people give you a compliment and you don't know what to do with it. Um, I think our, for me anyway, my natural reaction was always to explain why they were wrong <laughs> in the compliment that they gave me. And I had to learn just to say thank you and, um, yeah, internalize it and make, make yourself feel really good and don't reject the compliment. Um, that's a hard one. I challenge everybody to get better at accepting compliments. Um, 37 is kind of the flip of that and it's learning to ignore the opinions of people who just do not matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, there may be some people in your life that you're, you're just going to have to block out because all, all their negativity, negativity and pessimism and views on what you're doing and how you're doing it and all that kind of stuff um, can really screw with your head. And ultimately, it's the only opinion that really matters is your own. So if you think you're doing the right thing um, from a weight loss perspective, I don't mean if you're out there murdering and killing people, but from a weight loss perspective, um, just know whose opinions matter when they're negative opinions. I'm not saying ignore all advice. I'm just saying the negative naysayers of the world. Learn how to block them out. Number 38, um, when should you be open about the fact that you've had weight loss surgery? Um, who should you tell? When should you tell them? Um, that kind of stuff. And again, this is a real personal one, um, but I think have a plan about who who is it okay that knows what you're going through. Um, for some people, you have to tell your work. You can't get out of that. Um, for some, you can tell a little different version of the fact that you're having surgery. You just have to be specific about what it is. Um, but kind of know just how much you're okay with um, friends and family, work, whomever, knowing about your surgery. Um, what number was I up to? Uh, number 39, um, this one was a weird one for me. I was not expecting how much my v views or the way I, the way I would react to, or even judge, um, morbidly obese people and people in general and what they were eating. Um, I've had to really like, 
whack myself over the head in judging other people and what they're eating. Um, so yeah, that whole learning whose opinions to ignore. Sometimes I think people need to ignore me because, and not that I actually vocalize them um, to people, but I will walk through a food court and see what people are eating and just be like, how could you possibly be eating that? It was only nine months ago that I was eating that. So who, who the hell am I? This freaking hypocritical dickhead who's now judging other people. So um, I was not expecting that. Um, I thought I was always going to be the world's most understanding and accepting of everybody. And I, technically I still am, but yeah, just this, this thing I now have of, um, going, you sh really shouldn't be eating that. But I say it in my head. I never say it to them. Um, number 40. Um, I wish I'd been prepared for the whole, uh, buying clothes and, um, what am I trying to say? Knowing that you were not going to be able to fit into them for very long before you shrink into the next size. Um, I wish I'd been a bit more prepared for that because there's definitely a lot of clothes I bought when I realized I could, um, that I was only able to fit into for a few weeks before I'd moved into the next size. So I wish I hadn't spent as much as I did on clothes in the time I was shrinking. I wish I had, um, yeah, gone and bought some more affordable options. Um, number 41, um, shoe sizes. I wish I'd known my sh my feet were going to shrink, um, a whole shoe size. Um, yeah, I have got a lot of shoes and again, thought I was okay to buy shoes, you know, around the time I'd had the surgery. Not, little did I know that within six months I wouldn't be able to wear them because they would flap all over the place and be like clown shoes. Um, so I wasn't prepared for that at all. Number 42 in a similar vein is jewelry. Um, so losing weight was great because it meant that I could fit back into, you know, like some rings that I hadn't been able to wear for a while. But even like losing weight on your earlobes, not kidding. I've lost weight on my earlobes and now my earrings fit differently. So it's like, it just affects everything. It's just crazy. Um, number 43. So pre-op, I hated selfies. I hated being in photos. I wish I had known that post-op, I would go through a mega selfie phase where I would appear to be the most vain person in the world um, because I just could not stop taking selfies of myself. It was pretty funny considering how much I loathed taking photos of myself. Um, so yeah, I wish I'd known that. Um, I don't know why I wish I'd known that. It doesn't like impact me in any way other than the fact that I'm just really surprised by it. Uh, number 44, um, I was really surprised by just how differently strangers treat you once you've lost weight. Um, people are so much nicer to you when you're not morbidly obese and it's frustrating um, because, yeah, now when people in, in shops are, you know, especially lovely to me, um, I actually get really angry because I'm like, why weren't you this nice to me, you know, 12 months ago when I was a customer here? Um, you know, people couldn't look me in the eye. Now people are like my best friend. It's I, it, it just makes me realize just how shit people are. And again, this goes back to me. I do it too. I judge people. Um, but yeah, I wish I had realized just how differently you're treated when you're have lost the weight versus when you're, um, bigger. Anyway, I won't talk about that too much because that makes me really sad for some reason. Um, number 45, um, traveling may, it's so different. Um, it kind of, some of it's also tied into that previous one about how people treat you differently. Um, but you know, people never used to want to sit next to me on a plane or a bus or a train or, you know, in public transport in general. Um, now it's like, I almost forget that I don't take up more than one seat. So therefore somebody could sit next to me. And you know, when somebody sits next to me, I'm actually kind of surprised because people used to avoid me like the plague. So traveling just changes completely in terms of your comfort, in terms of fitting into the seat and having a seat belt and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, the whole experience changes um, when you become just another person in the crowd. 
Number 46, hair loss. Okay, I totally knew that hair loss was going to be a thing. Um, I just wasn't quite expecting it to be as impactful as it was. Um, I, I'm one of those people that goes, I'm very lucky I started off with really thick hair, so when I lost hair, I still had lots of hair. Um, but I lost a lot of hair around my hairline, so even though I had a lot of hair on my head, um, I did actually end up with what appeared to be a receding hairline. Um, and all my little baby hairs are now um, starting to grow back, which is nice. Um, so I can start filling out my um, my bald spots. Um, but yeah, I, I wish I had, I don't know, been a bit more prepared for that because that felt really quite shocking. And I remember back to my selfies thing, I started taking selfies and cutting off the top of my head so you couldn't see my um, hairline. So sad. But anyway, hair loss. Um, or, and also don't get hung up on what vitamins and shit you can put in your hair to stop the hair loss. It's a, it's a natural process and you kind of just have to go through it. Um, and if you're consuming enough vitamins, it will eventually stop and your hair will grow back. Uh, number 47, dumping. This one is not so much of a secret and most people know about dumping. Um, but I think what was unexpected for me was you kind of have to learn what is going to make you dump, like you personally, um, compared to somebody else. So for some people, you know, they can actually have high sugar foods in some varieties, but not others. And um, yeah, it's just really interesting. So you kind of have to go on a little bit of a discovery to see what is going to make you dump if, if you're going to dump. Um, and I think the thing with dumping is it's so unpredictable because you may have had something once and it was fine. Another time you have it, not so good. Um, so the unpredictability of your tummy it just never ceases to amaze me. Number 48, um, I was really surprised that my, my taste bud receptors, whatever, um, changed so much. And I've, I've seen so many people who have gone off food and drinks that they loved pre-op, but now just don't like the taste of. Um, and that's true for people in terms of really sweet food. They know like, they just don't like it anymore. Um, some people have completely gone off coffee. Um, for me, my taste has changed in that I need things to be really flavoursome, otherwise they just taste really bland. So I have to put heaps of garlic in things. Um, I actually have like double strength coffee so that I can even taste the coffee. It's, it's really strange to me how much the, my taste receptors have, have changed post-op. But I'm not alone. It is a thing. Um, my nose is really itchy. Okay, number 49. Oh, the foamies. So that whole when you eat too much and first of all, I think you're completely unprepared for the type of pain of overeating. Um, until you experience it, you're just not going to understand it. Um, but then, yeah, all the warning signs of having eaten too much. So, you know, your nose might run, you might start burping, but at one point you'll realize that you've really eaten too much, not just the pain, but the foamies. So you 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 get all this buildup of um, excess saliva and it just like, it gets all foamy and chopped around in your throat and eventually you might puke, which does happen to me. So I, yeah, you need to learn the warning signs and um, definitely measure your food out um, because overeating sucks, it hurts and the foamies are just, ugh. Number 50, we've reached the end. Number 50, you will have moments where you regret having weight loss surgery. Um, and they are usually moments and they're short lived. They, the longest I've ever had was a day. Um, and it's usually driven by um, social occasions um, where I want to sit down and have a big meal with people. Um, my friend is dating at the moment and she's now realizing how awkward a first date is with somebody who wants to take you out for dinner. When you order a $40 meal and eat three bites, how exactly how do you explain that? Um, but yeah, for me, it's more the social occasions of, you know, Christmas and birthdays and all that kind of stuff. And I, I want to celebrate with everybody. It's, it's a traditional thing in my family to eat a lot on social um, gatherings and I really feel like I do miss out um, on those um, but I talk a lot 
because I'm not eating. Everybody else has to listen to me, so ha ha ha. Um, but yeah, I think the only other time that I regret having the surgery is any time I'm extremely stressed and emotional and nothing is working to soothe me and comfort me and I just want to be able to comfort eat and I can't. Um, that's the only other time I regret having the surgery. And you know what I do? I look at my vision board and my dream board and my goals board and I go, well, if I could stuff my face with a mud cake right now, I won't achieve these things. So put on your walking shoes and go get some fresh air, girl, because this is a lifelong journey. Anyway, so that concludes my 50 things I wish I knew um, before I had weight loss surgery. I've got so many more in my head, um, but yeah, again, videos are getting way too long. Who has time for all of this? Um, anyway, if you've got any questions or want to know anything more about any of the things I've discussed, please do feel free to reach out. I am absolutely an open book. Okay, hope you're having a great week. Bye.